Firebase recently released a new query method called Limit to Last. It's available in version 7.3 or greater of the JavaScript SDK, and in today's video, I'll show you exactly why it's so useful by implementing a pagination feature with Firestore. If you're new here, like and subscribe, and check out a discount code in the description below for Black Friday. It's active now, so feel free to use that if you want to become a pro member. You'll get access to the Firestore data modeling course, along with a bunch of other advanced Firebase content. For today's video, let's start by talking about the problem that we're trying to solve. You may have a large collection of data that you want to show to the user in batches. Or in other words, you want to split your data into a discrete set of pages and allow the user to click through those pages. If you've ever tried to implement pagination in Firestore in the past, you might know that it's pretty easy to go in a forward direction, but going backwards to a previous page was not so easy. You'd have to follow these four steps, which just isn't very intuitive for something that you would think would be relatively easy. Well, I have some good news for you. The limit to last method makes this process much easier. It's similar to the existing limit method, but instead of limiting to the first end results, it limits to the last end results. Over the next few minutes, we'll look at the implementation details from scratch, but I first want to show you the query functions that make this possible. And make sure to stay tuned until the end of the video because I'm going to discuss some of the limitations of pagination in Firestore in general. For this demo, we'll be using Svelte along with a new library that I wrote called Svelte Fire. The pagination queries and principles apply to all frameworks across all programming languages, but as you'll see in a few minutes, Svelte Fire provides some special magic to make pagination even easier. But I know not everybody's using Svelte yet, so let's start by just focusing on the queries that we need to make for pagination to work. The first thing you'll need to do is make an initial query on your collection. It needs to be ordered by a certain field and should be limited to a specific page size. So that's pretty straightforward, but when you want to navigate to the next page, you need to offset by the last result in that first page. This is pretty straightforward and uses query methods that have been available in Firestore from day one. So here we have a function called next page, which takes the last document from the first query. It orders by the same field, but uses the start after method, which will offset from that value. So you'll start after the field value from the last document by the same field that you're ordering by. And it should limit by the same value as well. Now let's say the user hits the next button a few times, but now they want to navigate back to the previous page. In that case, we want to grab the first document on the most recent query. In this case, we'll offset using the end before method. And finally, that's where limit to last comes in. That will give us the results that were seen on the previous page, giving us a full forward and backward pagination system. Now let's take a minute to look at the full implementation details in Svelte. The first thing we'll do is install Svelte Fire. And again, this is a library that I wrote and I'm very excited about it because it unlocks some UI patterns in Firebase that are really awesome. And if you want to see more videos about Svelte, let me know in the comments because I would be more than happy to make them. The first thing we'll do is install Svelte Fire. It provides several components that allow you to access data from collections, documents, and user authentication. Then we'll initialize our Firebase app in the app component and use the Firebase app component from Svelte Fire to set up the context. From there, I'll set up a couple of properties on the component. The page size will be three, and the field that we want to order by is the username. From there, I'll simply paste in the query code that I showed you earlier. The only difference is that the query is now a function, and the reason we do this is because Svelte is reactive, so anytime we change this function, it will update the query that we send to Firestore and update the data in the UI. So now we'll go back into the UI, and we'll set up a collection by using the collection component from Svelte Fire, and we'll give it a path of customers, which will read the customer's collection. Then we'll pass in our query function as a property to that component, and again, whenever the query function changes, it will re-execute the request to Firestore. Now here's where Svelte gets really awesome, because it has this thing called slot props. It allows me as a library author to create a variable in the template called data that is the data that is unwrapped from this collection. When the data has actually loaded, we can go ahead and loop over it and show the customer username, the ID, and their avatar image. Under the hood, Sveltfire is also keeping track of the loading state, very similar to React Suspense if you're familiar with that. So we'll use the loading slot to show a loading spinner before the collection is actually loaded. From there, we'll go ahead and set up a couple of buttons that can run our previous page and next page functions. To go to the previous page, we need to grab the first element from the current query. To go to the next page, we need the last element in the current query. Normally, we would need to write some extra JavaScript to calculate these values. But in Sveltfire, they're made available as slot props. So we simply say let first, let last, and as you might imagine, that gives us access to the first and last documents in the collection. 
And that's all there is to it. We're now running a paginated query in Firestore that can go in both a forward direction and a reverse direction. But before we wrap up the video, I do want to talk about some of the limitations with pagination in Firestore. The biggest one, in my opinion, is splitting your data into a discrete number of pages. If you want to show a number of pages and have the user navigate to a specific page, it's really just not possible in Firestore. At least, not out of the box. If you really need a feature like this, it is possible using a cloud function to aggregate your data on the back end when it's created. I have a snippet on Fireship.io that shows you how to do this, so check that out if you really need it. And also, you can use an offset operator, but it's only available on the admin SDK for Node.js. So that could be very useful as well, but again, only works on the server. Now, the next thing I want to point out is not really a limitation, but more of a caveat that you should be aware of. If your data changes frequently, you might get unexpected results in your paginated queries. For example, if the user is on a given page and then you add a new document to the collection, it could change the results on that page. So the data would jump around instantly, which would be a weird behavior. Then if they click back to the previous page, they'll get a different set of results than they saw originally. So the bottom line here is that pagination is most well suited for collections that don't change frequently and that are not real time. This is especially true if you do something like infinite scroll, which is just a fancy way to do pagination, because you generally don't want the position of results to change after they were loaded in initially. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe, and make sure to use the discount code before it expires on Friday. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you soon.